In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the upcoming 2023.3 release for Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Before we jump into today's video, I want to just quickly point out that this is the beta release for 2023.3, so it's not out yet. If you are interested in having a sneaky peek at it, or you want to try it out for yourselves, then you can actually do so within your own home assistance by just signing up to the beta. Just make sure you've got a couple of backups to hand. If you don't fancy manually trying it out yourself, then I will leave a link to the beta release notes in the description below. But just be aware, just like the beta, they are a beta so they will change and things may change and update and even be removed from the update just like one of the features I covered last month which was precision and if you were interested in that feature well it's actually made a comeback for this month. This month there seems to have been a really big focus on the UI and there's been lots of changes to the UI that's changed a lot of things that we know in Home Assistant and redesigned a lot of others. One of the first and most obvious ones that you'll see is the new Windows XP-esque turn off screen. So you're no longer going to have to go hunting around for the option to actually reboot Home Assistant. And this option is now actually featured as a small power icon in the top right of the system screen. Selecting this little power button will then show you this new power menu. And from here you'll see all of the options that you know and love, such as quick reloading, restarting, rebooting and the full system shutdown. And if like myself you usually make use of the developer options or the little power menu to actually reboot Home Assistant, then selecting these options is still available and you can still make use of them. And if you select those, they'll actually now also display this new turn off screen. Carrying on with my second feature, and this one stays on topic with the whole UI theme, and this one is some brand new dialogues. A lot of the dialogues within Home Assistant have been reworked in the update, so we've got some brand new entity information dialogues, we've got a brand new automation screen dialogue, and there's also brand new dialogues for lights, switches, sirens, and more. The Entity Information dialog, also known as the More Info dialog, has had a bit of a rework. Previously, it featured three tabs along the top, which gave you access to Info, Settings and Related. But in this update, those tabs have now all been removed in favour of some smaller icons. And these small icons give you the same access and functionality, but they give you a cleaner and smaller look to the actual dialog face. If you caught the State of the Open Home 2022, and you will have seen Matthias and Paul talking about some of the new changes and showing off some of the new designs for entity dialogues and other little bits. With this release we're starting to see the first new overhauls and some of those new changes that were shown off starting to appear within our home assistants. Now when you select an entity for either a light, a switch or a siren, you'll see these brand new dialogues that give you a nice interface to actually control that device. With the lights you'll see this brand new slider and at the bottom of that slider you'll also see an on off button and also a colour temperature. The create and automation dialogues also received a rework and it's now much cleaner and fuller looking. Inside of this dialogue there's no longer a little drop down for the blueprints and you'll now see the blueprints listed as their own individual items and underneath them you'll also see an author information. So now when you choose to create one of those you can actually author it and you'll be able to see who's created that automation within your different home assistant setups. Moving on to my third feature, and this one is some brand new capabilities for the new assist feature. In the last update we got the brand new assist feature, and this allowed us to send intents to our home assistant, and it would then act on those intents, so we could do things like send a command saying turn on the light, or turn off the light, and home assistant would then do it. But in 2023.3, this capability has been extended, and we can now actually query assist, so we can do things like ask how many lights are on in a set area, or we can ask how many windows or how many doors are open, and we'll get a response based on the things that we ask. Currently, the intents for three different types of question have been added, so the questions can be things like asking the state of a singular entity, any of the questions like are the lights on, are the windows on, or also questions which involve how many or which. It's amazing to see this feature keep on growing and keep on being enhanced, and if you are interested in helping out with this feature, you'll find a link in the description below which will give you information on what you can do to help out with things like sentences or translating. So awesome job and awesome job Mike for actually getting this work done. Feature number four then is the one that you're going to keep on hearing and you're going to keep on seeing it throughout the course of this year and it's Thread and Matter. A couple of weeks ago Home Assistant published an extensive article about Thread and Matter 
and about where Home Assistant are at currently with the features and some of the changes that are happening with Matter. One of the big features and changes that have happened with Thread and Matter for this update, uh, if you have a compatible Matter hub, you'll now be able to connect that hub to Home Assistant and any child devices that are connected to the Matter hub, you'll be able to access and view them within Home Assistant. Now, I don't have a Matter hub yet to actually try this out, but if you do have one, it'll be interesting to hear what your thoughts are and how well this actually works. So let me know in the comments below. Wrapping this all up then with my fifth and final feature, and it's a nice small change to the Reolink integration. Now with the Reolink integration, you've got access to two new controls, and these controls allow you to change the focus and zoom levels, and you do this by just adjusting some little sliders. If you're a Reolink user, then this is a very nice feature to have to be able to actually control it within Home Assistant, but I would like it if you could actually adjust these and control these in the actual live camera feed, so maybe that's something that might be possible in the future but for now, they're just their own individual controls. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five new features in the 2023.3 beta. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.